Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to be together. Uh, as uh, things would have it, our internet froze just on the stroke of 11 o'clock. So, um, yeah, it's good to be live and it's good to be with you. And uh, it's a time of drawing close to the Lord when there's so many other things that we uh, are facing, so many different distractions. We need to focus our attention our hearts on the Lord and what he's saying and what he's doing rather than on all the negativity that's coming from the, the media around us. So I just love the, the time of worship that we had together, that he is a way maker. He's the, the miracle maker. And uh, this is such a, a time uh, for us to be singing the song and declaring truth that God is the God who will make the way for us when there seems to be no other way, he's the one that we turn to. And, and I particularly love the fact that this song was written on the continent of Africa. And so this is a song for us and uh, a song that we can really use to stir up our hearts, stir up our faith and, and to look to the Lord that uh, no matter what the difficulty that we're facing, that he is the one who actually comes through for us. Uh, so I'd like for us just to take a moment just to pray together as we trust the Lord for uh, an outpouring of his spirit on the continent. We need more than ever before. We need the Lord to come through for us super powerfully. So, yeah, Father, we join our hearts together. So many of us link together in this place right now. And we come in agreement asking that you would make a way where there seems to be no way. We're asking, Lord, for a release of a vaccine. We're asking that there would be innovative ways in order to treat this disease and this virus that's going around. We ask, Lord, that you would rush in, that we remember the scripture that says, when the enemy comes in, that you raise up a standard like a flood, that you are going to flood against the enemy. And so we're asking, Lord, that you would raise up a whole new standard of health in our continent and that you would cause um, the the dissipation of this virus we say no in jesus name we put a hedge of protection by the power of the spirit around our families and around our city we ask lord that you would indeed show yourself powerful and you show yourself strong in these days so we give you praise we give you thanks hallelujah so good so good well it really is good to see you and my goodness is this place full this morning <laughs> this is about the fullest we've ever been so uh, yeah so good to to be with you um just a couple of things i want to just bring to your attention quickly um so obviously we're here together and on sundays for the foreseeable future um we're going to be gathering at about 11 o'clock on a sunday morning with a message we'll have a time of worship we'll send you the links um, in the days leading up to um, the Sunday uh, that we can have a time of worship together. And families, you should already have received some kind of a, um, a digital, digital pack for your children so that you can do uh, some activities with your kids. And uh, so if you didn't get that, please be in contact through the website, through um, uh, our communication channels, and just let us know and John will we'll get a pack to you. Um, also, on the website, you'll see that there's a place for you where you can fill in prayer requests. There's a form you can fill in. And we've got prayer teams that are on standby, and they'll be getting to you to pray into specific areas and needs. Uh, we've identified a couple of categories, but anything that you'd like prayer for, uh, just to, to reach out to us, our prayer teams will, will respond. Also, we're joining at 1 o'clock each day for a time of uh, prayer and encouragement about 15 20 minutes and we'll have a different focus each day and uh, again just an opportunity for us just to connect uh, during this time while it might be social distancing but we're not going to distance from the Lord and we're not going to distance from one another so in actual fact we're actually increasing our contact with you so one o'clock daily opportunity for us to connect with one another also on Wednesdays we have a virtual healing rooms and uh, we'll be a very specific targeted focus around praying for healing on Wednesdays. Uh, you can 
request prayer for healing on any other day as well. But uh, just to let you know that our healing rooms are going to be virtual on Wednesdays. And then also if you're part of a connect group, and in fact, everybody should be part of a connect group. We've been speaking about this for years and it's been in preparation for this exact season that you might be in a connect group where you can uh, be part of uh, receiving encouragement and uh, prayer for one another on, uh, on an ongoing basis. So our community connect groups on Wednesday evening, you'll be joining together for a Zoom call and, and we'll be able to see each other, um, you know, on, on screen, you'll be able to communicate and uh, so a little great way of, uh, of connecting. So uh, just look out for that. Your community connect group leader will be contacting you this week, making sure that you have enough data, uh, that you've got the, the technical ability to be able to connect uh, with one another. So, so good. All right. So what I wanted to do this morning is just share with you some thoughts uh, that are coming out of Acts chapter 16. So if you can turn uh, either to uh, your, your paper, your, your printed Bible, or else reach out um, for a digi digital um, copy of the scriptures. Um, but we're in Acts chapter 16, and I'm going to pick it up from verse 16. Uh, this is the story of Paul and Silas. And uh, they've, they've been confined. Does it sound a little familiar? And uh, we're just going to look at some of the things that the Lord did for them as, um, uh, as he uh, made a way for them where there seemed to be no way. So in Acts chapter 16, picking up from verse 16. Now once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. Now, when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights. He rushed in and he fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. It's quite a phenomenal story if you think about all the things that were going on at, uh, at the time. So Paul and Silas were in Philippi. Uh, they'd been reaching out. The Lord had, had uh, led them to be in Philippi through very sp specific instructions. 
And you know, some of us are, are looking at the the place we're in right now, and we think, how on earth did we manage to get into uh, this place of confinement? We've been following the Lord. We've done everything that He's told us to do. And some of us are thinking in terms of the context of our careers or our finances, our business, uh, being estranged from, from people. Perhaps we've got family members far away from us. We'd love to actually be with them, but we can't because of social distancing. And we're wondering, now, why is everything conspiring against us? I've been living my life in such a way as to please the Lord and to do everything that He's told, told me to do. You know, Paul and Silas probably could have had a similar kind of feeling to, to this. They were on, uh, on a journey following the instructions of the Holy Spirit. Paul had had a dream where there was a man from Macedonia who said, come over and help us. And so they were in the will of the Lord. They were doing what they were told to do. Uh, they had had some supernatural encounters. Uh, the, this, this demonized woman had been set free as just a crazy supernatural intervention. That they'd seen converts coming, they were planting a church. There were just all these good things in terms of the advance of the kingdom. And now they find themselves being beaten up and being thrown in jail. And, uh, and like everything is conspiring and working against them. You know, now is not the time for us to get down in the dumps because we're in this place of isolation and we're not able to do all the things that we'd like to do. This is not a time for us to throw a pity party. This is time for us to throw a praise party. And this is exactly what we see Paul and Silas doing. And, and the reason I want to encourage you with this is because we see that the Lord came through in a powerful way when they began to see their circumstances and the situation through different eyes. It says it was about midnight. You know, midnight often speaks to us about being when it's the worst time, when, when everything is, uh, is in chaos. In, and in darkness. And you know, no matter how hard things appear, no matter how dark things are for you, whether it's your midnight that you're facing, I want to encourage you, just like Paul and Silas, that you take some time just to lift your eyes off the situation and to and to praise the Lord. And this is exactly what Paul and Silas were doing. They actually were moving to shift and to change the atmosphere. It says that as they were praying and they were praising, they were singing songs, hymns to the Lord, as they were exalting the Lord, other prisoners that were also there in captivity, in their confinement, they began to listen in. And so Paul and Silas changed. They shifted the atmosphere, not just for themselves, but for others round about them. You know, the people around us are looking to see what's being posted on social media. And there's so much negativity, but how about we begin to shift the tone of conversation and we begin to put some positive posts up, that we begin to take some action in causing a realignment of people's focus instead of on the darkness and on the negativity, but we begin to tune our inner eyes and we begin to look up above the circumstances and the situation. It says that there was a suddenly, at midnight there was a suddenly, and then later there was an at once, there was an immediate action of God. You know, as we take time to praise the Lord, things are going to shift and change on the inside. Now we might still have to observe social distancing for quite a long period of time, but we don't have to remain in an inner prison. We can come to a place of freedom, we can come out of a place of confinement, we can experience the at once and the suddenly of God when we change our focus, when we're lifting our hearts in prayer and in worship to the Lord. I want to encourage you that God is not far off. He's not distant. He's not, you know, leaving us up to our own devices. But in actual fact, He is listening to the prayers and to the praise of His people. Many, many years ago, I heard uh, a, an account of this passage um, where the, the preacher was saying that God is, was listening from heaven and the psalm says that heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. 
And he, he began to, to turn to the angel and say, stop, listen, what, what's that singing I'm hearing? And he tuned in to the, the, the singing of Paul and Silas. And, and he was so taken with their songs that his foot began to tap along. And because the earth is his footstool, it caused an earthquake. And so the singing caused God to come through for them with this earthquake. And that's when the prison doors shook open. Now, um, I'm not suggesting that we're going to have major earthquakes all around the planet. But the, the interesting thing is that God is listening to our prayers and to our praising. And he will shift things. He will be involved. His heart is moved as we come before him. And so we will experience our own suddenness in, in our own situation as God comes through for us. I also want to just encourage us that God is moving powerfully in this time. Much like the jailer and his whole household came to the point of asking the question, what must I do to be saved? Many people around the planet right now are asking the question, what must I do to be saved? I, I love the, the clips and the stories, the, the video clips, the sound clips of people all around the planet that are singing songs of worship in their neighborhoods. People standing on their balconies and, 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 and lifting up their voices together. Uh, it's just so moving to see uh, tens of thousands of people just calling out to the name of the Lord. Believers and unbelievers hearts are being moved and being stirred, being shaken at this time. And, and I truly believe that God is going to cause an acceleration in the kingdom during this season. This is not a time when the season is retreating, uh, where, where the kingdom is retreating. It's a season where the kingdom is advancing. And so let us be praying into this advance. Let's be looking for it, be looking for opportunities to share with our neighbors, with our with uh, uh, people that we uh, have contact with in social media, that, that we have a shining light within us and it's time for our light to shine even in the midst of all this darkness. So I believe that much fruit, much um, good things is going to come out of this time. Uh, I'm reminded from Romans 8 and verse 28 that God causes all things to work together for good. Now, please, I'm not saying God has sent this virus. I'm not saying that he is causing heartache and pain and all of this death. That is not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that God can turn things around and his goodness can be so powerful that he can cause even the bad things to look like they're a good thing. That's how powerful God is. He can turn things around. And so I believe that we are going to see a tremendous harvest that's going to take place as people realize and recognize their need for a savior. Uh, I love a post that has gone viral and been in several news outlets. A pastor and his wife, we know them personally, where uh, the pastor's wife in the Northwest has contracted the coronavirus. And, and she said, Rather than being afraid of the virus, be afraid of sin and of the consequences of sin, which is hell. It's much more important to be afraid for that. And I think that these kinds of uh, platforms that believers have to spread a gospel message uh, is so powerful to take advantage of these opportunities. And so many people are going to stop and think about these kinds of words as they face up to their own frailty, fragility, and weakness in the light of, of eternity. I want you to look at your home, not as a prison, but your home as a castle. It's a safe place. It's a place for you to draw near to the Lord. It's a place for you to come aside and to seek His face. So I want to encourage you, use this time to to pray and to praise that you might see an end suddenly coming into your situation in the future. As we begin to plant seeds of faith through prayer, we know that we will receive 
a great harvest if we do not grow weary, if we do not give up. So those are the thoughts that I wanted to share with you from Acts chapter 16. Just a tremendous encounter that Paul and Silas had. Uh, the Lord restored to them. Not only did the, the, the jailer and his household get saved, but also the Lord restored their, their standing in the community as the officials came and, uh, and released them from prison. And so let's be looking for the, the church to be vindicated at this time. Just a couple of other thoughts uh, as I change gears here a little bit, and uh, we're going to wind down uh, today's post. But I just wanted to encourage you to, to just be really careful about what's going on in the airwaves. Uh, in the verses uh, at uh, verse 16 of Acts chapter 16, we see that there was this woman who was demon possessed and it says that there was a spirit of python some of the translations actually name the spirit and uh, and the spirit of python comes around and wants to as a snake wants to twist things but also wants to suffocate the breath and the life out of people you know what's going on right now is a suffocating of people's voices it's just an interesting thing that the coronavirus is, is going after uh, the, the, the air waves, literally, in terms of your breathing and your lungs. And, uh, and so we, we, we recognize that there's a suffocating of life, but also in the spirit realm, there's a suffocating of people's faith. And so just be aware of what's going on. The attendant spirit that's going along with uh, all of the uh, the virus in terms of the medical virus but there's a there's a fear virus that's associating with it and wanting to suffocate people's hope in terms of the economy and your finances and your business and uh, and and what's going to happen to you and your future and all the things that you've built up I, I just want to declare to you that the Lord has got a way for you where there seems to be in a way the way maker will make a way for you. You do not need to panic and you do not need to partner with fear, but invite the Holy Spirit to encourage you and to release a greater measure of faith inside of you to trust him for the more. We know that God has spoken a word of releasing and restoring double portion. We looked at that in Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 12 last week. I want to encourage us, let's keep on running to our stronghold of hope. We are captives. We've been taken captive by hope. We are prisoners of hope. And, and so do not allow the spirit of Python to come and to get a stranglehold of you, of your thoughts, of your emotions, and of the sense of your destiny and your purpose in God. God's destiny has not changed. His purposes for you still remain. God is still on the throne and regardless of what's going on on the planet he is able to come through powerfully even if it appears to me a midnight hour for you god will bring your deliverance and so with the word he's able to turn things around and the spirit of python will be expelled and removed from you but one of the things that I just wanted to bring to your attention is that there are so many contrary posts and words that are going on. Words that seem to be saying, much like this fortune teller, proclaiming these are servants of the Most High. And, you know, this is the word of the Lord and you know you must listen to this. I, I want you to test everything that you're hearing. There have been a number of posts that people have been forwarding and, and it's coming from a very different theological grid from where we're at. And so I'm asking that you test every word and you, 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 you examine, is this the, the Lord speaking to you? When people come from a particular paradigm that the devil is going to win, that the Antichrist is so powerful that we're all going to be subjected to the mark of the beast and all of this with the coronavirus is just a precursor to the enemy coming in 
to give us the mark of the beast and to give us uh, a chip that's going to track wherever we go and the surveillance is being increased that we, we might be monitored and the end times are here and uh, you know be afraid be very afraid folks anything that does not leave you with a sense of hope and a sense of peace does not sound like the voice of the Lord that when the Lord speaks even when he brings warning there's always hope that's attached to it there's always a sense that God is in control and that he is working things and uh, and that you you can rest in him and so these words of fear that are doing the rounds folks I want to encourage you test those words very carefully we spent a lot of time in the book of Colossians for exactly this reason to prepare ourselves that we might be able to discern is this taking us towards an understanding that we serve a victorious king who's on the throne and who's triumphing over the enemy each and every step of the way so set your your hearts and your minds at peace and and don't follow every uh, wind of doctrine and follow every post even if it appears to be coming from prophetic voices uh, if it leaves you disturbed it leaves you in a place of uh, dis ease it is though it was a disease for you so please folks I want to encourage you just be be really alert and be careful we know we read the end of the book we know who wins and so we can be in a place of rest in him because he is good so let me just pray for you and uh, and bless you as we end our time together Thank you, Father, that you are our God and that you take care of us. I'm asking for each one in the Breakthrough family that you would impart to them right now, just even in their living room, that they would experience your peace flooding over them. That they would know that even if it feels like they're confined and their feet or in stocks and they're in the inner cell and they're, they're being jailed and that there is no hope. They, they're feeling battered and bruised and beaten and in tremendous pain. Thank you, Father, that you are attentive to the cries of your people, that you are listening and that you're moving powerfully on our behalf, that you are not going to leave us in the prison but you're going to bring us out into a place of victory. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to turn these things around. That which the enemy meant for harm and for evil, you are going to turn it around and you're going to cause it to become good in our lives, in our families' lives, in the life of our city and in our nation. And so we're asking, Lord, that we would experience your peace. Not only that, but as we continue to pray, as we continue to praise, as we lift our eyes up above the circumstances, that a shift and a change in the spiritual atmosphere in our suburb would change, that fear and gloom and hopelessness would be dispelled. Wind of the Spirit, would you come and blow? Would you come and blow away the clouds of depression and gloom and doubt and let the sun shine of the sun break through into our city, into our suburb. So we thank you, Lord, that we are safe in you. We run to you, our strong tower. We are yours. We belong to you. You've taken us captive. We're your possession. We are prisoners of hope. So let hope arise within us once again. And let faith be stirred in our hearts and let your blessing rest upon every member of every household thank you lord that we have access to healing and so we reach out to you that you would touch every single body that you would release healing and wholeness those that are in pain right now those that are um, 
having the effects of colds and flu. We just ask you to drive that right out now. Thank you, Jesus, for your touch upon our lives. We thank you, Lord, also that we have an opportunity right now to draw near to you. Would you cause this season to be a time of growth, of development, and of expansion? That good things for every single one of us would come out of this time and this season. So let peace, joy, your provision, and your protection be our portion right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So good. Just one last thought as, uh, as we close off this morning. Much like Paul and Silas shifted the atmosphere through a time of worship, I want to encourage you every single morning, perhaps the first thing you want to do is put on some worship in your house. Before you reach for WhatsApp and your text messages, before you reach for the news to see what are the latest figures, Rather than that setting the tone for the day, how about the first thing you reach for is some worship music. To shift to change the environment and the atmosphere in your own house. And then from there, you'll be able to face whatever other news that you have. So be the one who sets the, the atmosphere in, in your region and in your home. Let's do that through prayer. And let's do that through worship. So God bless you. Thank you so much for uh, being with us today. And um, may you be strengthened in the Lord. Let's keep in touch. Love you. Thanks for being part of the Breakthrough family.